Por culture. Okay. Wait, it, speaking about, you know, like, you know, you're in uh, the field, like cardio, you know, mm -hmm. cardiovascular field. Like, do you see, like, and I, I'm just real curious, do you see people with, like, who are vegetarian, who have, like, blockages in their heart, they have heart problems, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people who take a vegetarian diet versus vegan or just meat eaters, like, people who eat meat, like, do you see people with heart issues with, that are vegetarian their whole life? So, so that, that's one of the things that, I, that I, I call out is like the vegan agenda. <laughs> because um, the answer is yes. I, do I see pe people who are vegetarian or vegan with coronary artery disease? The answer is yes. I believe it. I had high cholesterol and I was a vegan, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but the answer, the answer is at a much lower rate, you know. So they get it, but not to the same extent as the general population. Right. Don't eat like me. Huh? I mean, that's don't one. eat like me. <laughs> <laughs> but but you have to understand that there's like environment, and then there's um, genetic factors at play. So you can do everything right and still develop coronary artery disease, uh, but it depends on your genetic predisposition to developing it. But the environment does play a huge role. But you can be a meat eater and still be protected from coronary artery disease, uh, and so. It's not just veganism that protects you. So there's like, there's plenty of meat eaters who live long lives, you understand? Mm -hmm. But they, they, they do other things, right? They eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. They go walking a lot. You know, they, they're, you know, they, they're, they're more, they have, they have better quality lifestyle habits, you know what I'm saying? That's and true. so those are the people that live, live the longest. And one of the things that we found out in just terms of this like uh, life expectancy data, or who lives the longest is like people who move the most. Like so the more you move, the longer you live. So like people who you know walk more, like people who have like the, uh, the hunters and gatherers. And once they move past a certain age, if they're moving, I believe that because my mom is still kicking and she is. <laughs> but but move, movement is is a, is a huge factor in, in longevity. But other other than that, it, it's um your diet, which is hugely important, right? And so we haven't gotten it down to a science, but if you eat a good amount of fruits and vegetables and you get all the key antioxidants and nutrients through your diet, like you generally, you generally live longer, right? But if you're more sedentary, if you eat more of certain foods that cause inflammation, you're more likely not to live as long. And then smoking is another one. People who smoke don't live as long and it doesn't matter what you smoke, it's just if you smoke. Uh. So it's not just tobacco, it's just smoking. Yeah, that's um, what they even, yeah, they even get it. They have it down to like they have um like um certain tribes and certain like uh, indigenous um areas. Like when they started like smoke, smoking their meat or or like burning things inside of their hut, oh. like died at a, 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 at a higher clip. You understand? And it, it was it was a, it was a smoke, right? It's like it's it's an irritant. So right, right, right. Certain general thing, and like vegans. Um, they're more likely to avoid those things because once you decide to become vegan, like that's not just a vegan decision; it's a lifestyle decision. Like, it's, oh, it's so um, hard to too. To you you yeah. even attempt to eat meat. I shocked my system so bad trying to eat meat in Texas, thinking it's grass fed. We're good. It's we're gonna experiment a little. No, I was miserable for like a whole three four days because I shocked my system. My dad's like, "You're retarded." <laughs> you shocked your system. Yeah. I told you so because he's he was vegetarian for so long. Wow. You know, so, and he's an anesthesiologist, so he's not a cardiologist, but you know, he's still in the medical field. So he's like, it's good for you, you should do it, blah, blah, blah. And but it is. of course <laughs> I, I did. But I tried to I was like, you know, this steak looks so juicy, yo. Like I really just wanna try it. And I regretted it endlessly. But and I still to this day cannot eat meat. Well, that's not a bad thing because if you eat meat, you're more likely to have come in contact with carcinogens, right? And because a lot of preserved meats, they, they found out has carcinogens, um, especially like bologna, ham, all that stuff. Um, the, the stuff that they use to preserve it and give it that pink texture is, is a carcinogen. It is what it is. And that, that it increases the risk of colon cancer. Mm. So like that is a factor of decreasing um, cancer right so it's not 
not the vegan diet, but you were, you, you were like avoiding that known carcinogen that was FDA approved, right? That we lived well, I actually out. switched because I had a hysterectomy and my doctor told me that it would be like the best thing for me just because mm -hmm. like the hormones and everything like that. Yeah. So that's why I switched. But yeah, now it's like know. I tried to like slowly go back and it, it was just like, no, nah, not happening. Yeah, it, exactly. It, it's what it is. But at the end of the day, like vegans, they do live longer. So yes, I agree. And, um, but people who move their body, people who eat more fruits and vegetables, people who don't smoke live longer as well. So that's my only point. Gotcha. Hmm. Yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, anything else, man? I, I'm, my bad for, for roasting you about the uh, 5G, man. But hey, are you a vegan? Um, are you a vegan? Um, Bernard? No, I'm not. But but I <clears throat> but I'm not opposed to being a vegan. <clears throat> but I probably would never be a vegan. I want to I want to you know get down to being a pescatarian, possibly. <clears throat> but That's what doing, yeah. But for me, um. I wouldn't not ever eat meat. I would just eat it on very rare occasions, like, you know, um, quarterly. Yeah, see, I tried that, dude, but I just don't live. I die yeah. every time. But for me, like, like I want to have more, more natural foods. I think when you eat, like, you know, fresh fish or uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, green, green, green uh, leaves of, uh, leafy vegetables, more nuts, um, legumes, beans, all those things have been associated with longer life so i want to eat more more of that you know and fish too a fish has omega-3 fatty acid which is very good for the arteries and so uh fish eaters do well from a cardiovascular perspective like wine drinkers do well from a cardiovascular perspective oh, I heard yeah, wine is good for everything yeah, wine good for everything <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's a it's like for, for whatever reason um like we think we know the mechanism, at least for red wine we do. And it's actually been um, proven with a randomized controlled trial. But people who drink alcohol, who drink mild to moderate amounts of alcohol, have less cardiovascular disease, period. Mm. They live longer. And so um, alcohol use, and it depends on the type, but has a protective effect. It's when people drink too much or they binge that it caught, increases cancer and liver disease. So it's like a balance kind of. And, and it's more like how you live your life. Like caffeine drinkers have um, no issues. And in fact, it, you know, caffeine- Really? Don't tell me that because I drink way too many cups of coffee, I think. No, nah, it's just associated with longer life, but we don't know if it's related to the caffeine or the type of people that, that consume caffeine, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, the type of people that consume caffeine, you know, have a, a higher SES, socioeconomic status in general. But there's a lot of other, um, associated factors with caffeine drinkers. So we don't know if it's caffeine. No? I don't think we've ever proven that. But it's, at least at a minimum, it's not bad for you. You know that. I feel like I can't, I can't manage my day without coffee, you know? Yeah, I mean, people get, get concerned because they don't want to get dependent on something. Because, uh, you know, caffeine... You know, I, like, I, I, I can go without it. It's not like I'm addicted to it or anything like that. You know, like people say they have that caffeine. Like, I don't drink soda. I don't... I'm literally water, and that's it. But mm -hmm. you know, occasionally I will. But you know, caffeine's a stimulant. I think it like blocks phosphodiesterase or whatever. But um, it uh, like it, it gives you a, a, a neurological effect, right? And people like it. It, it releases. I don't remember the hormone dopamine or serotonin. I don't remember, but it, but it does that. Like it, it actually affects your neurological system. And so over time, you get accustomed to it. When you don't get it, people have withdrawal. And so um, that's a real thing, um, but it's not like detrimental. You know what I mean? Like even if you, if you drink coffee every day, like it just doesn't affect your longevity or anything like that. So having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea once a day is not necessarily a bad thing. You understand? Know so that's all. A lot of people think it's bad, but what's bad is the milk and sugar you add to the coffee. <laughs> that's the bad thing, not the coffee. Hey, I drink it black, so we're good. Yeah, it's, it's good for you, man. It is what it is. <laughs>